Have you ever ran a Gleaner? Uh, I don't believe, I personally have never ran a Gleaner. I've sat in one down at the National Farm Machinery Show um, just to see what they're like as far as combines go. Um, a few neighbors around here do run Gleaner combines. Uh, I don't believe we ever ran a Gleaner. Maybe my grandpa has combine wise, but uh, we don't have a Gleaner and we haven't run one in a long time if we've ever run one. Are you getting any more deer equipment? Obviously, um, in the future, yes, but as far as future purchases go, I don't know what our plans are as far as the next purchase or whatever, so that can kind of lead into the next question later on. Would you ever become a dairy? No, um, there's plenty of dairies around here, and I just don't wanna to have to deal with the livestock. Um, we're mostly, grain guys we're not going to be dealing with livestock really and um not a really big fan of having to deal with uh livestock really so not scared of it at all or anything you know i'm just not a big fan of having to deal with livestock or anything so i'm perfectly content with running green <laughs> why not any case equipment just not a fan we actually Funny story on that, um, I don't remember what tractor it was, I'll probably do a video on this, maybe like a live stream talk video or whatever, or even discussion. Um, we almost were going to be all Case IH at one point, and this was because back, oh, back when we were getting the 4630, I believe, you know, that tractor came brand new from the factory. Uh, 1974, 1976, and I believe it arrived here at the farm with a giant red bow on it because I believe it was just around Christmas time as well when my grandpa bought it. And I believe at the time, I don't remember what case dealer he was dealing with, and he actually demoed a case for International Tracker, and I don't remember obviously what model it was offhand. Uh, I asked him beforehand, he would know for sure, but offhand, I don't remember what it was. But at the time, he almost bought that tractor because he was working with John Deere, our, our local dealer at the time, which I do not remember who that was at the time, obviously, because it was before my time, but he would remember immediately. But um, he was working on trying to get the 4630 because that was the tractor he actually wanted over the case because he wasn't that big of a fan of the case tractor at the time. Um, just because of everything that was going on, he preferred the 4630 over whatever international tractor he was comparing it to. So uh, if it all came down to it, and if John Deere wasn't able to get the 4630 at the time, uh, he would have ended up buying that case or, case or international tractor at that time, and we probably would have been running all of our equipment at this time. But uh, John Deere ended up ordering the 4630, uh, the dealer did, and they had, at the time, I believe it was like a shortage on equipment at that time, and there was a guy that needed, I believe, five or six 4630s out of, that he was based out of, out of Texas, and he would literally stick guys on the trailers and follow those uh, trailers that had the 4630s on them all the way from the factory to wherever they were going to. And when uh, the guy showed, when they showed up with the 4630 here at the farm, the guy was here and asked my grandpa, he literally told him, I would pay you so much more over what you paid for that tractor. And my grandpa told him no, because he was specifically waiting on that tractor to use out in the field and the guy turned around and went back to John Deere over in Moline and followed another tractor. So, but I guess that just goes to show how times were back in the 70s and even early 80s and late 60s when equipment was, I guess there was a shortage on equipment then in the 70s. So, but that is um, the funny story behind the 4630. So we almost did run or we would have almost been running all of our equipment then, but personally, I'm kind of happy that uh, they pulled through on that 4630. So, uh, moving on, if I can find the next question. 
Are you going to play FS19? Yes, I have uh, FS19 for Xbox One, and I do have it for PC. Um, PC-wise, I'm not going to be doing anything on PC until the office is finished, which nothing has been done to the office since my last video on it, so when will it be done? I'm hoping sometime in January. Um, I'm hoping sometime before the National Farm Machinery Show, but I don't know. We'll see. How many acres do you run? Uh, 1,500 of our own. Um, total acre-wise, harvest-wise, it'll be around 2,500, I think, harvest-wise. So uh, that will be total acres harvested for 2019. Um, but total acres that we do run is just 1,500 from start to finish. So of our that we run everything. So, but total harvest acres, um, 2,700 or 2,500. Will you be getting any bigger equipment since you got the S690? Um, I've already discussed that we are going to a 12 rail um, corn head planter. Um, no, we will not be going to a 24 row planner um, anytime soon just because of everything that we've done enhancement wise to that planner and you know updating equipment wise I do not see a 24 row planner uh, really in the cards at this time uh, if we do pick up more acres I would like to go to a 24 row but not really uh, in the cards at this time uh, draper head wise, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do with the 35 foot draper head if we're going to run it on the S690 for a couple more years. I mean, there's absolutely nothing nothing wrong with that head at all. I mean, there's maybe only 400 acres on that rebuild, and the rebuild only was just re rebuilding the sickle. So, with all new guards and a new sickle on it. Belt-wise, I feel we could run the belts probably another two years, three years even. Um, we do have brand new belts with it that when we bought the head used, I believe it was only a year old, I believe it's a 2011. Um, when we bought it, it was, uh, we bought it back in 2012 then, and uh, they supplied us with brand new belts when we bought it, but uh, going off of the draper head uh, to the grain cart, would I like to go to a bigger grain cart? Yes, I would like to go to a bigger grain cart someday, um, but I'll talk about that in a later question. Um, any other larger equipment? I would like to go to a 15 inch ravine planter, 40 foot. That would be nice, either a Kenzie 1631, 3600, or even 3500. Or a 1790 John Deere planter, that'd be nice. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it all depends, you know, in the future how many acres we have and what, you know, our intent is and, you know, for equipment wise. Where do you see the farm in 10 to 15 years? More acres. I could see us getting more acres in the future, but, you know, as far as storage goes, I could see us having bigger storage in 10 to 15 years. You know, 10 to 15 years is a long time, so farm, especially in farm years. So, uh, during those years, like from 10 to 15, I would say, you know, we would probably more than likely see a uh, bigger grain set up, uh, probably a few new, not new, brand new to us, but new to us, so used equipment wise. Um, I do not see us making any brand new equipment purchases at all. You know, probably not even in my time, unless something huge and significant happens, acre wise, but I do not see that. So, but I do, I do see some more purchases in the future within 10 to 15 years, obviously, a uh, bigger grain setup, hopefully, within 10 to 15 years, and more acres, hopefully, in 10 to 15 years. Um, that's basically all I can really say for that. Uh, what will the next big purchase be? If you consider a big purchase being a 12-row corn head, yeah. <laughs> 
that's basically all I know at this time uh, that we would be like that we would like to go to a 12 row cornhead. So um, hands down, it's not going to be an eight row. It's not going to be a 16 row. It's just going to be a 12 row. So I don't know. You know, after that, I have no idea. You know, it all depends on you know the future. I don't know. I would like to get a sprayer, I'd like to get a 15 inch row bean planter, you know, I'd like to get a brand new tractor, you know, you know, it's a brand new piece of equipment, it's not feasible, not for us, not for a lot of guys, so, I mean, you can want, you can wish, you know, but, I don't know, I don't know what the next purchase would be besides 12 row corn hut, so, I guess you'll just have to stay tuned and find out. Do you have any depth on any equipment? No. Uh, well, on any farm, well, I can't even say farm. Uh, the 2011 F450 Ford uh, with the 12 foot BMI uh, flatbed does have depth. Uh, do we have any issues with it? No. Um, I believe it only has 60,000 miles on it. We bought that brand new back in 2011 and went out to Iowa to a and have them put the uh, custom fabricate that bed on onto that truck. So uh, as far as depth goes, uh, we only use I believe those jugs. Uh, let me go take a look at the jugs real quick. So those jugs only come in about two and a half gallons, and I believe those jugs only cost oh, anywhere from eight to eight to twenty bucks depending on where you buy it and what the price is at the time uh, most of the time we can get it for about eleven bucks depending on where we go and we only really use two and a half gallons every like five six months so really only about five gallons a year you know I mean grant you know we only have sixty thousand miles ish well yeah between fifty five and sixty thousand miles on that truck so it's not like it's being highly used and driven every day. You know, it's just a farm truck, so and it's mostly just used for delivering seed and service and everything on the equipment and everything, pulling the header trailers around and you know, you know, basic farm operations with it and everything. So, but five gallons, I think at most, is what we put in that truck a year. Um, depth wise I want to stay away from depth as long as I can with on the larger equipment with the combines and the tractors and even a sprayer so how many people in your family participate in the farming operations basically everyone almost um, I guess you could say almost everyone basically plays a hand throughout the year in helping um, it's mostly um, me and my dad and my grandpa basically running the farm along with my grandma being the account well not really the accountant but on the books basically uh, my sister does help every once in a while and outside of the family yes they're well not really outside of the family but more aunts and uncles and cousins do occasionally sometimes help pitch in sometimes on basically smaller tasks on the farm sometimes you know occasionally rarely uh, will you buy something else besides John Deere? Yeah, Great Plains <laughs> and McDonald. Um, uh, as far as tractors go, no, it's always going to be John Deere. Combines go, John Deere. As far as sprayers go, more than likely John Deere. But even if you consider, if we ever get a Haggy, which I'm not too big of a fan of the Haggies, and plus I'd kind of rather have the booms in the rear, especially for doing uh, nitrogen applications on the wheat to not have all that nitrogen blown on the sprayer and having to pressure wash the entire sprayer off that you would just have to pressure wash the booms. Um, I would more prefer um, a John Deere basically for a sprayer but as far as vertical tillage equipment goes I, I'm a big fan of the Great Plains Turbo Max. Um, always have and you know, probably always will be unless something happens or somebody else comes out with a better design um, but for our operation we feel the Great Plains Turbo Max does an awesome job for you know sizing the residue up and doing what we want it to um, 
McDonald Heads. We've been a huge fan of McDonald Heads ever since we first got it. Um, we've seen some guys demo it before we bought ours, and we thought it was awesome. So, just our personal preferences on equipment. So, what was your dream tracker as a kid? I think I pretty well covered that. You know, with the forty-two or the forty-twenty and an eighty-four hundred R. But as a kid. Um, you know, they didn't have the 8400R when I was a kid. Um, I would say I remember back when the 80, when the 8030 series came out, and no joke, this is I'm not even gonna lie about this. And I never really talked about this before. The 8530 was actually my dream tractor as a kid. Now I'm not, you know, fudging this just because we bought the 8530. I remember back when our salesman stopped by and he dropped off, you know, the, I don't remember what the advertising theme was at the time, but I believe it, it had the 80, I think it had the 8530 or 8330 or 8430 on the poster and it had the lightning all around it and I don't remember what the advertising perk was, I don't, we don't even have the poster anymore, but, uh, that was always my dream tracker at the time. I always thought that would be awesome to run with the 4650. And now, you know, I don't know how many years later, at least, you know, I don't remember. The 85, the 8030 series or 8030 series came out in what, 2005? So, what is it, 13 years later, 14 years later, you know, here we are. <laughs> you know, funny story back when, back around 2000, my dad went to the National Farm Machinery Show, and they just came out with the 9400 or the 9000 Track Series, and the 9400T was down there at the John Deere booth. You know, he was looking at that tractor and said, "You know, I will probably never own one of those one day." And you know, back in, you know, probably seven years later, eight years later, after that, you know, we ended up with one. You know. And when the S series first came out, you know, we knew it's like, would we someday end up with one of those? Yes, because obviously we would need to update combines, but did we see it anytime soon? No. We always went to the farm show and it was like, and, and thought, wow, you know, that's a combine we will probably never have in the next five, eight, ten years. That changed this year, you know. I mean, you can't say. You basically can't say never on a farm, you know. You got to keep your options open and always look for that good deal. I mean, that's basically what we do, you know. We don't, we're not after, you know, uh, cheap, poor quality. We're after that cheap, good quality, good deal out there, you know. We're not, you know, going to jump on the first thing that we see, you know. We're going to hunt and hunt and hunt until we feel that what we find is a good deal. And for what it is, is a good deal, so... Yeah. Can you do an equipment tour? Um, I did a farm tour, actually a two-part video, one of the entire farm here and of, uh, in the part two of that video, I did a tour of the shed over at our house over there. Um, I can do an updated, updated equipment tour probably sometime in January. I can do something like that um, after stuff gets settled with the S690 and everything, and the 9400T is gone. I can do an updated equipment tour for sure then. Why John Deere? Um, you know, I basically touched on that, on how we almost went to running case and international equipment. Um, why John Deere? Well, growing up, we were, you know, dad was raised on John Deere, I was raised on John Deere, and we always knew John Deere is quality. Um, I'm not bashing. The other equipment at all you know we never ran the 80s 90s and 2000s case equipment so I can't say anything different or bad about them but we always knew you know growing up when dad was growing up also that buying John Deere meant you were buying John Deere quality I mean you can laugh about it if you guys run case equipment but I mean most of the deer guys know what I'm talking about but um, in recent years, um, I feel John Deere's quality of equipment overall, based on steel and their bearings, 
things and everything, et cetera, from neighbors has gone down, I feel, a little bit. Um, overall designs, though, I feel they've really improved designs, but I feel like they've kind of cheapened up on the overall bearings and uh, steel. Um, I'm seeing a lot of products that we get from John Deere part-wise that say made in Taiwan, made in um, China. It's like, come on guys, you guys can't build stuff in Moline anymore. You know, most of it's just fabricated and then shipped to Moline basically, or Waterloo, come on. <laughs> and also, um, based on dealer location, I mean, basically we only have as far as I know, like two or three case dealers around here and in a stone's throw, we could have, I don't know, six, five or six John Deere dealers around here between Knox, Wemack, Balbo, um, Leesburg, DeMont, uh, Plymouth, Warsaw, well no, not Warsaw, um, Warsaw doesn't have a store yet, but you know, that's, I don't know, six stores right off the bat that I can think of that are an easy driving distance, so which as far as I know for case dealers, there's only the one in La Crosse and the one in uh, uh, Plymouth and the one in, um, I don't know. I, you know, obviously I don't really look out for much for case dealers because we don't really have any bright equipment, so. Did you guys buy your semi-trucks new? No, uh, the Freightliner, uh, I believe, well, I know for a fact both of them were bought and used. Um, the black semi was actually uh, repossessed um, by the insurance company and was bought by a local record service, which we bought from the local record service. And uh, actually that semi did have a sweeper on it. We shortened the wheelbase up and painted it up. Actually, well, when we got it also, and then just recently last year, we painted it as of 2017. We painted it again. Uh, we took it up to Kenworth and had them do that, but it did used to have a sweeper on it as far as the black semi goes, the Kenworth, uh, the T600. Uh, Mile-wise, I think that has about 560, I believe. Uh, the blue semi, the Freightliner, um, that was uh, bought it was bought and used. It, I don't remember exactly where Dad found that one. Um, it was actually painted pink, I believe he said it was pink, with racing uh, or hot rod uh, racing flames on it. Um, so obviously Dad repainted it and painted it blue, what it is now. Um, Paint-wise, that does need to be repainted. Um, I don't know what we're going to do. As far as painting that goes, I would like to get a different semi to replace that one, but do I see that anytime soon? No, I like driving that blue semi. The blue semi is fun to drive, but, and so is the black semi. That Kenworth is really fun to drive too. Um, the Kenworth is a nine speed uh, transmission and the Freightliner is a 10 speed. Who is your main dealer that you do with? do business with. Um, John Deere dealer, that would be uh, Green Mark Equipment, um, and we get parts from them uh, in Knotts, Wittemack, Leesburg, uh, and Plymouth. Um, we have dealt with Castonias before, and uh, before that they were uh, a and but then a and uh, sold the Castonias, so uh, the only Castonia store we ever deal with, basically, is the one in Valpo, uh, right there by, um, I believe it's what, Morgan Township School, I believe. But as far as our main Greenmark store, it, those are basically our main Greenmark stores. Those used to be actually Gilsingers until Greenmark bought Gilsingers, so uh, just a little fun fact there. Will the S690 have GPS? Uh, yes. Um, it will have the Starfire 3000 receiver on it. Um, it will not be running the 2600 monitor, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I plan on updating that monitor this winter to a 2630 and picking up another Starfire 3000 and another 2630 um, for a second GPS. Uh, how was your Christmas? 
so far so good. You know, I mean, basically, uh, Christmas went good, I guess you could say. <laughs> Uh, any major expansion plans? Expansion plans as far as acres or anything farm-wise? Not really. I don't really think much on any future really, like, is, or, like, future expansion plans coming soon, like, in the next three years or anything. I don't really see much going on as far as expansion, except that we added the office. I mean, if you could say that as an expansion plan, I mean, that was, it's kind of already being done now, but I don't really see anything going, like coming in the future really soon. Uh, what will be the next tractor? Um, some 300 horse tractor probably to replace the 4650, but like I said, you know, I touched on that before that I don't see us doing anything with the 4650 for like at least five years. There's, not much wrong with it at all. I mean, it runs and drives great. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, um, except for possibly a little bit of a hydraulic issue, but, you know, no big deal. Um, but anything, you know, within 10 years, possibly, but, you know, it'd be a mid-range 300 horse tractor or upper uh, 300 horse tractor. Uh, rate the 8530 from one to five stars six i like it but in all honesty i would say about a 4.9 you know just because of the windows <laughs> are you going to get a new planter since your corn head will be a 12 bro i touched on that a little bit earlier in an earlier question no i mean i don't really see the need for it at this time with the acres that we currently run um someday soon if we ever pick up more acres yeah i would like to go to a 24 row um, that would also mean uh, swapping the 4650 off the 16 row to probably back onto the 750 grain drill if we're still running that at the time and putting the 8530 or whatever tractor we have at that time, but it will still be the 8530 around because the 8530 isn't going around or going anywhere for the next 15 years at least. So. Did you ever consider getting a 9RT before getting the 8530? No. 9RTs, uh, one, too big for us at this time. That's why we're getting rid of the 9400T, just because we have really no need for it. Um, we're not strip tilling. We're not, you know, I mean, if we were still strip tilling, yes. But we're not doing, one, any strip tilling, two, any heavy tillage. So there's no need for it. And that's why... Most of you guys don't, most of you guys keep asking us, and the 9400T was replaced by the 8530. Now, most of you guys are probably like, why the sudden, you know, from a 9000 to an 8000 series and you're losing horsepower? We don't see it as that. We're seeing it as more as an increased efficiency and versatility wise with the 8530, because with the 8530, we can now do an hydrous planting. Um, you know, anything and then some that the track tracker couldn't do. You know, it can do everything that that track tracker can do. And I feel power wise, it doesn't really lack too much behind the 9400T, even though they are rated at uh, 425 horse and 330 horse. Um, the previous owner of the 8530 we talked to, and they actually um, did run a 9400T. Um, he did have a couple of track tractors that they ran out in Iowa, and he said basically, um, from what he saw, that 8530 will do everything that that 9400T can do um, with no problem, and from what I've seen this fall, yeah, I mean, it can do basically everything that that 9400T can do. Now, power-wise, it does have a little bit less power. But then the 9400T, but on spec wise, 330 horse I feel is a little bit less than what it actually is rated at. I feel it has a little bit more horsepower than what 330 is, or what it's rated at 330. Now, I've heard talking with the guys that run the 8020 series and the 8030 series that the 8030 series seem to be a little bit underrated on power on the spec sheet, whereas the 8020 series seem to be a little bit high on spec sheets power wise so I don't know I haven't really 
talk to too many 80-20 guys to find out if that's true or not, but considering I've run the 80-30 series, and I heard a lot of guys talk about being, about the power seeming to be underrated on the spec sheet, but I can definitely say that because it seems like this has a lot more power than, the, than 330 horse. I feel it's around anywhere from, I would say around 350 at the most, 360 horse it seems like. I mean, it seems like it has a little bit more giddy up than 330 horse, so. And that's not shift. That's another thing. That tractor is not shift either. Neither is the 9400T. So, uh, fun fact though, the 9650 is shift. Uh, power wise, uh, we do have a 102030 shift on it. Um, I don't remember if we're running the 20 or the 30 boost on it, power wise, 30%, 20 or 30%. Um, I believe if. Dad and I were talking about this the other day, and I believe he believes uh, that the we're running the 30% boost on it, which that would put us just under 400 horse on that combine. So anywhere between 300, 360 and 400 horse on that track or on that combine. So that's as power-wise what we have on the combine. Now, granted, do we need that? Not really. No, there's no really need for it unless we were going to put 12 row on that, which. I don't want to put a 12 row on a 9650. Can you? You probably could, but on our machine, I don't really want to. And besides, we're not keeping it. 